Hi, welcome back. So today we're going to have a look at my sim rig. I mentioned it in a previous video that I'd go through the sim rig and show you my setup. Since I did that video and I showed you a quick look around it, it's nothing like the same. Everything's been altered because I had issues with previous steering wheels and I've moved on to Fanatec and what I can say is it's so much better than Logitech and um, most of the things out there, the cheap end, I mean budget end, there's obviously far more expensive stuff you can use. But we'll go through the rig, I'll give you a quick look of it, but I'm not going to go into too much depth on like the PC build and all that. Um, I might do another video on that showing the PC build and various parts. If you want to see that, it depends how popular this is, um, but that's what I'm going to do. So why have I moved on to sim racing and pulled out a drone? Well, a couple of things really. This is no cheaper, so I'll tell you that from, from the word go, but you can do this all year round. I live in the UK, the weather's always garbage. So the flying times are drastically reduced. It's getting cold, I'm not getting any younger, and to be fair, the hobby for me is not going in the right direction. I think with all the changes that are going to happen with legislation over the next couple of years, it's not something I'm really interested in staying in. So I pulled out, so I've sold everything by a couple of DJI um, quads. I've kept the goggles and the transmitter and I've kept the Mavic Mini 2 and a Ma the Mavic Air 2. That's it, that's all I'm keeping. I'm just on the way of the thing. Today when I'm making this video, the Mavic 3 has been released or announced. No, you can buy it, can't you? And it starts at 1845 quid. That's not the direction I want to go in. That's not consumer drone to me now. That's starting to get into crazy territory. Looks amazing, don't get me wrong, but it's not something I'd get into. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the rig. Okay, so this is the rig. So, I apologise for two things. One, the lighting is going to be terrible in here, but there's not a lot I can do about that at the minute. And the second thing is the fact I'm having to hold the camera, the phone in my hand to do the recording because my gimbal's broken, so I'm about to look for a new one of those. So, let's start with the steering wheel. So, this is a Fanatec CSW, so it's a... CSW 2.5 wheelbase and I absolutely love the thing. Before this, previously I had a Logitech, started with a Logitech, quickly went off that, went onto a Thrustmaster and I had a TSPC which is not a bad um, base at all but this thing gives out more power, more torque and I can have a better hold for me when I'm driving anyway. Really nice. Don't do these new anymore, everything's direct drive but nice it is. This, I think, is a Formula V 2.5X steering wheel, something like that. Crazy steering wheel, really, really nice. As you can see, um, I, all these buttons are completely mappable, depending on what game you're running. The game that's constant, I've just finished playing on here, this is a replay. I've just been playing Formula 1, so I have all these things mapped. So, for instance, I have my brake bias on here, and I have my fuel setting on here. And then I have various other buttons for pitting and uh, also loads of other stuff. Every single one of these buttons is set up and I just about remember. So to the right of that I have a box. And this small box is for other controls. So if I don't want to use the steering wheel, so mainly for other games. Formula 1 I run with this. But I don't always use this wheel so I'll show you that in a minute. And this box is a button box. And these are again are mappable. To whatever I want so I have start certain games allow you to start the engine so I have ignition and the start there above that I have a screen which is going to look very blown out and I'm not going to be able to show you so that the screen above it if you could read it gives me certain details from what's happening in the race mainly I have that set on my lap time so I can tell my last lap and the lap that I'm on so above the steering wheel I have a phone and the phone connects to a thing called sim hub and it's a free piece of software that allows you to get the data from the game back to here. So I can see this one's set up and I use this for my tyre wear. So I can tell my tyre wear when I'm racing. It also tells me lap times. There's various other things it shows you. Really good. This rig isn't completely finished because this is going... And I've got another proper standalone unit going in here that's connected. It's not a phone. It doesn't use Wi-Fi. It just connects straight to the PC and that'll be going in tomorrow. And that's what I use on there. Uh, so down below we have these are Fanatec Club Sport V3 pedals. I absolutely love them. If you look at the back of these pedals, they're hydraulic cylinders. 
so they give you the feel of a real pedal so my brake pedal for instance feels like a real brake pedal an accelerator pedal I put it on because I don't like the soft feel of an accelerator so as you can see I'll just get down there you can see how it works in the actuation same on the brake and the clutch is just a standard pedal really nice set of pedals um, pick these up for 300 second hand really good value and that came with one cylinder and then I bought another cylinder which is about 75 quid I told you it wasn't cheap so and this is for, this is all bolted into this frame this is the GT Amiga Titan frame uh, it's a nice enough it's a nice frame and as you can see this is where the steering wheel bolts down here it's a nice solid construction there isn't much flex in my steering wheel when I'm moving so when I'm driving I've hardly got any flex at all in the wheel and this goes right round the back and it's attached to the seat which I'll show you in a minute so the seat comes well I actually bought it separately but the seat does come with it GT Amiga a British you can have a British based uh, organization that I bought this stuff from I've got a few GT Amiga stuff and they have a bit hit and miss I must tell you that some of the stuff's great some of the stuff's not so great customer service not the best at all so I, I wouldn't recommend the products really even though I've got a few of them and behind here we have a Yamaha soundbar and behind my seat I have a bass bin so and it's turned up high so I can get the roar of the engine coming from behind me and at the front I just get various noise crowd noise and stuff like that so that's how I have set it, set it up really nice sound and then we have three AOC 27 inch monitors and the setup so it gives me I think it's 7140 by 1440 7540 by 1440 it's something like that and these are running at 144 Hertz uh, these aren't bad monitors are quite a budget one for 2.7k so th this is running 2.7k I'm only running this at 2.7k and I'm running at 144 Hertz set for this particular game I have the settings on high and I have the high uh, everything set on high yeah this game I do yeah I have everything set on high and ray tracing set to high also on this game and I get a hundred to a hundred and five frames per second from the PC which we'll discuss in a minute so I get decent back out of it to my right I have something I cobbled together myself this is a desk you can buy to put a laptop on so dirt cheap that's 25 quid from Amazon and I have the keyboard because I still need a keyboard and mouse and I am running the Razer I can't remember which, which model it is Black Widow maybe not sure don't quote me on that and I have a Corsair mouse which I absolutely love on this side because you still do need to be able to get on the keyboard and everything it's, it's essential that it's all rigged up here behind that I have this is a decent piece of kit it's about 30 quid from Amazon this and this is a Bluetooth um, DAC so this is connected to the Yamaha to get and I have the PC connected on Bluetooth going into here which is makes it really easier for me because I am running all these on display cables they're not HDMI if I'm running HDMI I can come in the back of these as I have for the PS4 uh, Pro and an Xbox X down there and they both are connected to these monitor to the center monitor because I can only use one screen on them and I use them for playing if I want to play on the Xbox or the PlayStation now to connect them it's all getting complicated now you need this thing that's under here I have stuck that on with hot glue so I'll ignore the mess and that is a thing called a drive hub they're about 80 or 90 quid Cables come out of there, go into the back of my, this one's connected up at the minute to the PS4 and that allows me to use this complete setup on a PS4 including gear stick and handbrake which is incredible. So I can play Gran Turismo Sport on that. When, Gran, when the new Gran Turismo comes out, I think it's in March, then the, P, the PS5 will be coming in and that'll be connected to the PS5 but at the minute I only have the PS4. Moving across I have a shifter so here I have a seven speed box as you can see 
this is again Fanatec and the great thing I love about this shifter more than any others you can get is the fact there's a little switch down at the side here and if you look I can slide that across and now I have a sequential box which is really really good and that maps itself to the pedals at the back of the steering wheel. I also have a fan of Kandrick which is not working at the minute because the stupid design is it plugs in here with a 3.5mm jack which sticks out to about here and I caught it when I got in and snapped it so I need a new cable which believe it or not is like 16 quid um, because to get it from Fanatec with delivery and you pay import these days of course you're looking at about 16 quid so this is the Fanatec handbrake I really do like this and this is used mainly for rallying I just use it for messing it's great for drifting and it really is a nice piece of kit here I have a replacement steering wheel so this is the McLaren GT3 steering wheel and the st all these steering wheels on this system are quick release so I'll just show you that so if you look down the back of there, I hope that's working, and, and I put my fingers on there, I can just pop the steering wheel out. And as you can see, that's how it connects on. So there's where your pins pull, so that's how you get your feed to your switches, etc. On the small LCD display on the top of here, and then you just line it back up again, push it on, put one finger back at the back, and there you go. And that is a little display lit up, it wasn't lit up because there was nothing happening on the screen. And that display will show me various, well, on this particular game it's showing me speed, on some games it shows me speed and then flicks every couple of seconds to what gear I'm in, but I don't use that because I have this. So this is the gear shifter light, it tells me what gear I'm in, it'll also flash mentally when I'm smashing the car too hard, and that is rigged up into here also. So it really is a nice piece of kit. They cost me about 35 quid. You can get most of this stuff from people that sell on eBay, but there's a lot of people around do this type of stuff. Up here, I have a fourth monitor. So this monitor here is a 25 inch, I think. I have no idea. I think it's a 25 inch Samsung curved. These are also curved, the main monitors. And that is mainly used for what you see now. So this is telling me my track position and my lap times and where I am in the field so when you're in the middle of a race it will come up and tell you all the people that are in the race your time compared to theirs and your best lap and their best lap but most importantly when you've been qualifying it'll show you where you are and round here so let me just take you around here sorry about the uh, inconvenience so here we have a BMW steering wheel so this is what you'd use for drifting mainly and rally whatever really nice wheel again it's got LCD display on the top this thing is ridiculously heavy this is all metal really is a nice piece of kit so I mentioned before that the GT Amiga stuff so I'm going to show you the rig a bit differently so if you look at this angle that is a GT Amiga seat and a the, can't remember which model it is, but it's the XL one. It's the biggest one they do. Um, I don't think it's any good. Well, I think it's absolutely awful. It was 150 quid. It's not at all comfortable. If you look at the base of it there, that's what it did very quickly. It only took a couple of days to wrinkle like that. I uh, emailed customer support at GT, at G, Amiga GT. Got nothing back, so I'll just give up on it. This monstrosity behind is a quad is a triple monitor stand so these are expensive these are about 220 230 quid this holds the three monitors in place and as you can see this is supposed to be powder code and all that is doing is where i've moved the monitor and slid it along which is what you're supposed to be able to do with it powder coating came off they're saying it's been powder. anyway long story short got no real joy out of them and then above that you have to buy this bit separately which is the fourth monitor mount so this comes off here off the back of here and goes up and it's a really sturdy piece of kit don't get me wrong and I've just knocked one of the plastic <laughs> lugs off that holds it on so now the main part of the power in the rig obviously you need a bit of beef so this humongous thing here is some is a 
PC. I built this myself, I can't remember what make this case is, but it's crazy big and it's completely open. The reason for that is I'm running three monitors at 2.7K and as you can imagine it's going to get warm. With a normal case it was getting ridiculously hot, even with the water coolers and everything else this thing was getting warm. Since I put it in this case my temperatures are really really low. Probably lower than I'd ever imagined it would be. The case is really nice piece of kit, don't get me wrong. In here we are running a Ryzen 7 5800X and I think that's 8 core and I've got this running at 4.8 gig so it's really with the overclock to its limit. I'm running a Radeon RX 6700 XT graphics card which to me was all I was prepared to pay in this mad world. I think it was still 700 quid but it's a decent graphics card but I could not run 4k with this card. Uh, it's a good card but it tops out 1440p which is 2.7k perfect for what I wanted because that's all I'm running these screens at but if I would wanted any more I'd have been stuffed I am running 32 gig of GDR4 running at 3200 megahertz and I have something like 15 terabytes of storage inside this thing um, my main storage is run on two Sabrent Rocket one terabyte um, M.2s and then the other things are all either M.2 Sorry, either hard disk or SSD. I think I've got one hard disk in there, which is the two gig one, which I use mainly just to hold the footage from my drones, to be honest. The rest of them are all SSDs. So there's a lot of things going on in there. And the power supply is a Corsair 850 watt gold. So it can handle a fair bit of whack being thrown at it. I really like it. I, like, I love the rig. It's a really nice looking thing as well. And that is about it, I think. I can't think of anything I've missed out. There's various other things that are connected to it that you have to buy. You, we don't have to buy. You could start off as simple as you want and for a couple of hundred quid you can buy yourself a decent steering wheel that comes with a set of pedals and you'll be fine. You, do you need a clutch pedal? No, not really. Not at all because you could change gear with this and have it set to auto clutch. It really is one of these hobbies that's like drones and everything else you can spend as much or as little as you want. It depends what you want to get out of it. I love it, it's my new thing, so I sold a lot of drones for a chunk of money and this is what I invested it in and I'm really happy with it. If you want to see more videos on this, let me know in the comments. If you don't, I won't bother making any more, but I, I don't mind doing a proper detailed one of the PC and the build that I did, how much it cost where I got the components from and get more in depth on the rig and what have you but that's about it so thanks ever so much for watching sorry there's been a long time between videos but I will do another one at some point I can't tell you when it's going to be because obviously I'm not doing the same type of thing so they're not going to be every week or anything like that anymore so once again thanks for watching don't forget if you like it hit that like button and don't forget to comment down below if you want to see more videos thanks ever so much bye bye